And now we will hear the first lesson, which again comes out of this theme of planting seeds, and we hear God's promise to make a harvest. For as the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return there until they have watered the earth, making it bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater, so shall my word that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose and succeed in the thing for which I sent it. For you shall go out in joy and be led back in peace. The mountains and the hills before you shall burst into song, and all the trees of the field shall clap their hands. Instead of the thorn shall come up the cypress. Instead of the briar shall come up the myrtle. And it shall be for the Lord a memorial, an everlasting sign that shall not be cut off. The Holy Gospel according to St. Matthew. That same day Jesus went out of the house and sat beside the sea. Such great crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat there while the whole crowd stood on the beach. And he told them many things in parables, saying, Listen, a sower went out to sow, and as he sowed, some seeds fell on the path, and the birds came and ate them up. Other seeds fell on rocky ground, where they did not have much soil, and they sprang up quickly, since they had no depth of soil. But when the sun rose, they were scorched, and since they had no root, they withered away. Other seeds fell among thorns, and the thorns grew up and choked them. Other seeds fell on good soil and brought forth grain, some a hundredfold, some sixty, some thirty. Let anyone with ears listen. Here Jesus explains. Hear then the parable of the sower. When anyone hears the word of the kingdom and does not understand it, the evil one comes and snatches away what is sown in the heart. This is what was sown on the path. As for what was sown on rocky ground, this is the one who hears the word and immediately receives it with joy, yet such a person has no root but endures only for a while. And when trouble or persecution arises on account of the word, that person immediately falls away. As for what was sown among thorns, this is the one who hears the word, but the cares of the world and the lure of wealth choke the word, and it yields nothing. But as for what was sown on good soil, this is the one who hears the word and understands it, who indeed bears fruit and yields, in one case a hundredfold, in another sixty, and in another thirty. The Gospel of the Lord. Grace to you and peace from God, our Father, and our Lord and Savior, Jesus the Christ. Amen. I've got a quick question for you. Have you ever felt discouraged? 
I see lots of heads nodding up and down. And I have my moments too, believe me. I can remember a while ago when I received a phone call on Friday evening. It had been after a long day and I was tired and I was getting ready for bed and it was after 10 o'clock. Those are never good phone calls when you get them after 10 o'clock. And it turns out it was a dear friend and colleague of mine. And he and a number of other colleagues had just had some discouraging days. He had lost a loved one to death. He had encountered some obstacles, and many of them were struggling with the outcome and the results of this pandemic. And there was no way I could fix things for him, of course, but I did give him a listening ear and encouraged him to keep going. I think that is the purpose of this parable, in part. Jesus has sent out his disciples. They are learning how to do ministry. They are learning how to plant the seed of God in the soil around them. And they are encountering opposition. Imagine that. Not everything is going as they hoped. Does that happen to you? Where you have dreams and hopes that are here, and the reality is somewhere back here. And so they come back to Jesus, and they have lots of questions, and they have concerns. And Jesus tells them a series of stories and sayings that can help them when they are feeling discouraged as well. And in this story, about halfway through the Gospel of Matthew, he is telling the story of the sower, the parable. And I want you to put yourself today in the shoes of the sower, the one who is planting the seed. There are many ways that we can look at this story, but for today, let's think about it that way, as being commissioned to sow seeds, to act with kindness, to extend an invitation in some way or another to share God's love in word or deed. And so Jesus tells the story about a sower, someone who goes out to plant a field, and he describes four outcomes. And folks, three of them are bad. Do you ever have days like that? Where the majority of what you do does not turn out as hoped or desired. One outcome was this. Some of that seed fell on the hard paths. It was so hard, nothing could grow on them. And that represents... the those whose hearts are so hard and unwilling to accept him. Some of the seeds fell on rocky soil. That was the second outcome. Now, I know a little bit about this. My dad was a hobby farmer, and that meant that every spring where we grew up, he would see all of the rocks that had been pushed up in what he called the frost heave. And he would say to the whole family, let's pick rocks. And we'd go out in the field and we would pick up those rocks so that we could plant the fields. What an exciting time that was, I'll tell you. I just loved hearing that phrase, let's pick rocks. Well, in the Holy Land, it was actually more serious of a problem than we encountered in our Minnesota soil. Because in the Holy Land, much of the land has a thin layer of topsoil, and underneath that is a hard limestone shell or rock. And so many times, especially if you did not know this, farmers could plant seeds. They would go down in their roots just a little ways, and then they would die because they could not get through that rock and pull up nutrients and water. And so that represents those whose faith is shallow and does not go deep down into the soil or God's love. So that was the second outcome. The third outcome are those seeds that started to grow but then were choked out by weeds. 
Now, I just love the fact that this story comes up in July. I said that my wife is a gardener and I'm her assistant. And many times we have planted seeds in freshly tilled gardens. And we always get more ambitious than we can handle and plant a bigger plot of uh, or land than we probably should. And as a result of that, we have high hopes. And then in July, when we come back from the family reunion that we have every year that I was just at, we look and it's all green. Where did those weeds come from? So my wife's answer is, let's pull weeds. So I'm thinking, great. Dad said, let's pick rocks. My wife says, let's pull weeds. I'm hoping to graduate to something better someday. But that's what we do, is we go out and pull all the weeds. And this represents our lives in many ways. Where we may have the seed of God's word planted, but our lives are so full of other things. Our houses are full, our calendars are full, our attention is full, that there's no room for God. Do we need weeding? Sometimes we do. So three of the outcomes were bad. But the fourth is a miracle. Some of the seed fell in good soil, and it grew up and bore a harvest that was a hundred or sixty or thirty times what was planted. Now in this day and age, with modern agriculture, those aren't particularly impressive yields, but at that time, they were amazing, almost miraculous. And so Jesus is pointing us to the fact that these little seeds, just like the package of seeds that I got, can grow and produce an amazing harvest to get inside people and to result in some amazing good in this world today. And that is what Jesus was trying to encourage his disciples with, was to trust God for the harvest. Look for that time when those little seeds will result in good for the whole of humanity as well. Now, this means that as Christians, we need to take the long view. We need to see the big picture in order to see the harvest that God has planned for, from all of these seeds. And so to give you an idea about that big picture and the long view, I'd like to share a little video clip now that comes from a pastor in Australia. And he gives us a big picture of what God is about and say to me, they say, J. John, you know, what, what do you do? Uh, it's always very difficult to know what to say. Because if I say to you that I'm a reverend, which I am, that conjures up certain images in people's minds as to what I might be. <laughs> so I like to be a little bit creative in telling people what I do. I sat next to this lady on an aeroplane at Heathrow Airport. And I said, hello. And she said, oh, hello. And I said, where are you going? And she says, I'm going to Singapore. Then she said to me, where are you going? I said, I'm going to Australia. I said, what do you do? So she told me. Then she said, what do you do? And I said, well, <laughs> I work for a global enterprise. <laughs> She said, do you? I said, yes, I do. I said, we've got outlets in nearly every country of the world. <laughs> she said, have you? I said, yes, we have. I said, we've got hospitals and hospices and homeless shelters. I said, we do marriage work. We've got orphanages. We've got feeding programs, educational programs. I said, we do all sorts of justice and reconciliation things. I said, basically, we look after people from birth to death, <laughs> and we deal in the area of behavioral alteration. <laughs> she went, wow. <laughs> and it was so loud, her wow, loads of people turned around and looked at us. She says, what's it called? <laughs> I said, it's called the church. <laughs> it 
really, isn't it? If we are a follower of Jesus, wow. then we are part of a global enterprise. But not only is it global, it's intergalactic because it includes everyone that's gone before us. Wow. <laughs> And that's why we should not be discouraged, but keep planting. We take the long view. We have the big picture of what God is doing in the world. Listen to these promises from God in the first lesson this morning. The snow comes down from heaven and won't return until it's watered the earth, making it to bring forth and sprout, giving seed to the sower and bread to the eater. So shall my word be that goes out from my mouth. It shall not return to me empty, but it shall accomplish that which I purpose. It shall succeed in the thing I sent it for. Now that's God's promise. Let me tell you where I'm at. I want something more than that. I want a guarantee, okay? I do not want to just live in these promises. This is my human side coming out. I want to know that those seeds will have results. I want to control the outcome. Do you recognize that motivation? However, that's not the way that it works in real life. You may share God's love with someone who doesn't accept it. That's not your worry. Don't be discouraged. Just keep planting. We live by hope and not by guarantees. Once the seed leaves our hands, we no longer have control over it. The seed comes from God. The soil is the human heart. And we're not in charge of either one. Our only responsibility is just to keep planting. Now, that doesn't mean that we can seek to learn and do it as well as possible. I've often wondered about this farmer. Because I'm thinking, he just takes a bag of seeds and he goes and scatters it here and there. Doesn't he know where the soil is too thin to support growth or where the hard paths are? He seems like an inexperienced farmer farmer. And so I'm going to propose that maybe this is a two-part parable. Maybe Jesus was telling what this farmer was doing in the first year of this farm. And he was scattering seeds here and there, and some grew and some did not. But what about the second year? Did the farmer get better? Well, folks, the second part of that parable is left to you and to me to write so that we can keep trying and always strive to be faithful servants of Christ, planting the seed of God's love in the human heart. You know, there was a business book that I read once, and it was about leadership. And the phrase that caught my mind was this. Be sure to generate sufficient numbers of excellent mistakes. Well, what does that mean? Why would you want to generate excellent mistakes, any mistakes whatsoever? Well, the point is that we've been commissioned to plant the seeds, and we don't know at first how they will be received, but we can learn from that experience. Another way of saying this is just simply do something even if it's wrong or at least wrong the first time. Christians are engaged in a perpetual cycle of learning. We are disciples, which means that we are students, we're followers, we're learning the way to go. And so we have hope, not a guarantee, but hope that as we follow Christ, we will get better and better at planting seeds, but that the harvest is in God's hand. We take the long view. We stay encouraged, which means that we serve an eternal God.
God who holds us in God's hands right now so we can live in this moment and yet we have the long-term perspective in everything. As Christians, we keep planting and never give up because God never gives up on you and me. We never give up because God never gives up on you and me. This reminds me of a pretty extraordinary story of a man who was named Desmond Doss. You see his picture there. And Desmond Doss was a conscientious objector out of religious conviction. He believed that the war could be just, but killing was wrong. And he lived during World War II, and he became an American soldier, the only soldier in World War II to fight on the front lines without a weapon. He became an army medic, and there is a movie that has been made about his bravery called Hacksaw Ridge. And during a single battle in Okinawa, the bloodiest battle of that whole war, Doss single-handedly evacuated soldiers that had fallen near enemy lines. Over and over and over again, he braved enemy fire. He put his own life on the line to go back and save yet one more wounded soldier. And his prayer throughout all of this was, please, Lord, help me get just one more. Well, doing that, he saved 75 men without firing a single shot. He became the first conscientious objector to ever win the Congressional Medal of Honor. That's the kind of persistence God has for us. And so let's make that our prayer. Lord, please, help me get just one more. So don't be discouraged. Keep sharing God's love in Jesus Christ through your words and your deeds. Keep planting. Amen.
I'm playing. 